Hi, I'm Sam at Classic Fine Foods, and today we're here talking to you about vanilla. We're going to learn a little bit about the history of vanilla, where it comes from, where it went to, and also the different three species varieties that you use in your recipes at home. So, what is vanilla? Where did vanilla come from? Well, most people think Madagascar. Madagascar produces over 80% of the world's consumed vanilla now, but it actually comes from Mexico. So, this here is a little Mexican planifolia pod for you to have a little look at. Um, it's an orchid vine, so it has to grow in a sort of jungle area. It needs to be quite tall. Each individual plant takes about three years to be able to come through, and every single vanilla pod is an individual orchid flower that has pollinated. When you look at it, you should see that it's quite supple. You should be able to wrap it around your fingers. You should have some kind of plumpness. You should be able to give it a little bit of a squidge, and you should see some of those oils coming off right there. Absolutely beautiful. Mexican vanilla doesn't have the characteristics that you expect, that you think of. You think of vanilla, you think of very creamy, you think very rich. On the nose, it's actually a little bit more spicy, much more savory in a way. You're getting some sort of cinnamon, you're getting some cardamom, almost sort of some remnants of some chili and some citrus there as well, which is really quite interesting. So how did it first get brought over? Well, as usual with the new world, the Spanish came over, the conquistadors found it, used it as a spice and instantly got hooked. They started transporting it all around the world and much like cacao, it really developed and took off in Europe. But it took hundreds of years to be able to cultivate it anywhere else. The problem is with any crop, as it gets demand gets bigger, people want more, people want to grow more. And individual countries, the large kind of empirical countries wanted to be able to create their own crop. So we then jump forward to 1806. And actually in 1806, the first cultivated vanilla pod happened in Europe. And I'm pleased to say I drove over it this morning. It's just over what is now the Marlebone flyover in Paddington Gardens in London. And there in 1806, Charles Gerald would have had the first flowering vanilla orchid. Um, to be honest, it probably was done by fluke because most of the time in Mexico, you actually need an individual bee or individual birds as the pollinators that don't exist in any of the other regions that vanilla now grows, which is completely crazy, I know. But luckily in Paris, we owe so much to at that point was a 12 year old servant boy. And that 12 year old servant boy developed a handmade method to be able to hand pollinate each individual orchid flower. And he did it like this. As you can see, this is a crude illustration here, but each individual orchid has both the male and the female parts. They're basically their sex organs. You need to pull apart this little pollen mass that holds it together, the rostellum. And with a cocktail stick, you will separate that. You will then use your individual thumb to push the two sexes together and that will pollinate the flower. And at that point, you'll end up with a vanilla pod. Now, that sounds quite easy. Unfortunately, the vanilla flower only flowers one day a year for a window of about eight hours. So if you're in the case of somewhere like Madagascar, for example, you have to be quick. Individual pollinators will do between roughly 2,000 to 4,000 individual orchids within that eight hour window in order to get the full crop in in time. So let's talk about Madagascan vanilla. So this is again is planifolia. This is the uh, most exported vanilla coming from Madagascar. As you can see, ever so slightly plumper than its me uh, Mexican ancestor. Um, very nice and supple still, but a flavor much more that you kind of naturally associate with vanilla. Very creamy, very rich, and absolutely beautiful. So the other variety that did make its way over to Madagascar in 1848 was first when the pods were moved over was this big kahuna. This is known as a pompona. Um, it's also known as banana vanilla because it's an extraordinary size compared to the other one. The thickness of this, it's not as supple as the others. I can't wrap this around my finger in the same way. You have a much thicker flavor coming through. Think much more concentrated, almost like deep Jamaican rums, more balsamic coming through. A really fantastic vanilla. Um, actually, the reason as much as you can get, of course, a lot more yield from an individual pod is it didn't take plantations as well as its distant relative, the planifolia. And that's why you don't see these as often, but still grown in Madagascar even today. Now, 
They wanted to create something which was a mixture of the two. And the Spanish were getting a bit tired of the French taking over from Reunion Island of Madagascar. So in the Philippines, they were cultivating a new hybrid breed. And that hybrid breed became this. This is the Tainetensis. This is a Tahitian pod. And as you can see, the flavor is absolutely beautiful. Much more floral, much more delicate. You've got a lot of almost like tonka bean notes coming through. And that's actually because of the chemical compounds that make up the pod. There is much less vanillin in this, much more heliotropes. And the heliotropes what give that kind of floral tonka bean character. Very much, very squidgy. Um, very shiny, nice and supple to the point that I can wrap it around my finger still, but any more and you're going to have those seeds literally bursting out. Stunning flavour and a stunning pod and a stunning range, all available now at Classic Fine Foods. Enjoy! <laughs>